In the previous video, we looked at how to translate between position, velocity and acceleration graphs by looking at their gradient and how they affect each other. In this video, we'll go a little bit further on understanding graphs, but a reminder that you need to be able to describe the changes in uh, English sentences. For example, if you see this graph, oh, I see a uh, distance curve like that. In the beginning, how can you talk about the graph? Here, you want to say, make say uh, be able to say in english oh you see the slope increasing slope means increasing velocity then you look at this part oh it's a straight line so you must say that constant slope oh that means constant velocity the slope is velocity so when you want to talk about slope you talk about velocity then part three oh look at this it's kind of getting flatter the slope is decreasing so what does that mean for velocity you can say decreasing slope indicates decreasing velocity it's moving slower and slower, but the distance is still increasing. Uh. You're still moving, uh, just decreasing speed. And the last part, at the highest point, then when you have a horizontal point, no slope, no velocity. As you keep going, the gradient change sign. So that means velocity have changed sign. Now negative velocity, because negative slope, oh, you see going down, negative slope. Then you come to this part, slope is decreasing, it's becoming flat, flattening out. So that means slope decreasing, velocity decreasing. Once again, you have to make the link, okay? Velocity is less negative. It's going down, yes, but less. And last part, if you see a straight line, your distance or rather displacement is not changing, right? Means uh, your object not moving. Lah. You don't move, that's why you chill there. Ma. If you've got velocity only, you start to move. The same thing applies for velocity graphs as well. When you translate from distance to velocity, you can read acceleration from velocity graphs. Beginning part, you see? Increase at constant rate. How do we describe that? Positive acceleration, constant acceleration. Middle part, uh, no slope wall. So no acceleration. Ah. Yep, we say zero acceleration. Then you come to this part. We Negative slope all the way. Then we say, oh, that means we have negative acceleration. Or in other words, acceleration in the opposite direction. Okay? And then of course, you can plot the, the acceleration. Lah. Oh, how it actually looks like. So this whole graph is a nice one to look at. On the left side, uh, you must know how to translate and also talk about the values. Now what's this on the right side? Oh my my! This is a good exercise to try for all the different statements you try to draw the graphs. We'll come back to this in a bit, but first, don't, don't, don't cheat, don't see the answers yet. We are going to look at some past years. Later only, we will go back to that nice summary of graphs. So this is a past year question. What did they give us? A skydiver falls vertically from a helicopter and reaches constant terminal velocity. Constant velocity means no more acceleration. Ah. Constant ready, ma. constant means no acceleration. No rate of change of velocity. Graph shows VT. Which graph shows DT? How does the distance change compared to time? Okay, first things first, think of distance. Uh, velocity equals to ds dt. So gradient of st graph is the velocity. st or dt graph. So you don't know which one to choose, I suggest you pause the video, look through the graph carefully and think which one would you choose. Let's look at this first thing. There is so many shapes. How to know which one is the shape? The first hint is in this part. This is where velocity is constant. Which also means gradient of your dt graph should get constant after a while. Let's see which one satisfies that. A, okay, looks good. The gradient become constant and it become a straight line. This one, what happened to your gradient? This one is saying velocity is zero. No, we still got velocity. It is some value. I don't know, maybe 50 or whatever. So no, no, no. Velocity did not become zero. That's out. C says gradient is constant. Mm, okay. And D says gradient is constant. Okay. Those parts is still okay. How do we choose between these last three? Uh? The hint lies in the starting point. Look at this starting point. 
you start off by having zero. You start from zero, right? So at the start, velocity is zero, which means all our graphs, the gradient should start off to be zero. There's only one graph that satisfies this condition, and that is graph C. If you look at C, oh, at the starting point, I can draw a tangent. This is going to be a flat line. Here, the gradient is zero. What about the rest? The first one, no, uh, your gradient as you start already got an angle, already got a slope. So you don't start off with a zero gradient. So this one, wrong. D, even steeper. Wow, beginning already, you start off with such a steep gradient. No, this is not correct. So the only one that is the best choice would be C. Okay, so remember, skydiver, your velocity will slowly decrease, 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 become zero. And the displacement then will look something like this, where you eventually hit a straight line. Just for fun, and not for fun, lah, there are some questions they will ask you for acceleration. They give you velocity as acceleration. So what if I, I, I were to ask you how the acceleration would look like? How would you look at the velocity and draw an acceleration? Acceleration, no? let's use orange color to help us. Acceleration, this will be our gradient of Vt graph. So I'm going to draw a few gradients. I start off with a constant gradient, constant gradient. But then my gradient starts to decrease, decrease, and eventually no gradient. So acceleration zero. Hmm. So I have some initial acceleration that's positive, but it decreases over time. So maybe I can say this. I start off with some initial acceleration, but over time it decreases until I reach zero. Turns out this is actually how the skydiver graph will look like for acceleration. Okay, so that's all for this first main question about graphs. This next one is kind of a weird shape. Look at this. Oh my goodness, this looks like mats. Got sine, got cosine. Mm. What if we don't know the sine and cosine? You can still do it. You stay calm first. A mass on end of a string bounce up and down. Boing, boing, boing. This is the distance. So sometimes it's down there, sometimes it's up there, sometimes it's down there. Which graph shows the velocity? Oh, ho, ho. so we need to find the velocity. Velocity is gradient of, wow, why suddenly change color? Ah, of our distance graph or displacement. I guess you could call it either. So let's start off by finding some key points. In the beginning, what's the gradient? Zero. So here, velocity, zero. Is there under zero points? Ah? Yes, there are zero points. Here, Velocity is zero because the gradient is flat, tangent to the curve. Here also zero. So velocity also zero. This is my first clue already. Let me check A. Uh, let's check A for example. Here zero. Okay, correct. Zero, correct. Zero, correct. Hmm. Other places leh. This one. Hello, it's supposed to be zero. Hello, it's supposed to be zero. Hello, it's supposed to be zero. It's not out already. Bye bye. This one, C, it got zero points here, here, and here. But why Why are there extra zero points here? No, this is extra V zero points. Nani? Question mark. Something is not quite right. Last graph, zero, zero, zero. Ooh, possible. Leave A and D. I think we need more information. Uh, let's, let's, let's look at the other points then. So in between, you have the largest, velo largest velocity, largest gradient here, which means the largest possible positive velocity. So this is the maximum gradient, which is in the positive, going up uh, in time. You also have on the other end, the maximum possible velocity, but it's going down. So this is a negative. So you need a positive maximum. You need a negative maximum on those two points. Let's check A. If does that satisfy? It? Mm, looks like at this point, if we follow this trace downwards, you have maximum velocity. Mm, looks about right. This is positive maximum. Then on the other point, you have a negative velocity maximum. I think that satisfies it pretty well. So this graph describes the gradient of the first graph. 
we look at choice D, uh, the one we say also possible. Oh, oh, this one cannot already. You see here, this maximum is positive. This maximum also positive. Cannot. You must have negative. So this must be negative. So that's why we say no. Not correct. That leaves us with choice A. So this A is the best choice. Side note. If you have learned some kind of trigonometry last time, you will learn it in maths in A-level if you do take A-level. But side note, you can also use that method if you recognize the shape of the graph. For example, this distance graph looks like a upside-down cosine graph. Just for example. So if you want to find velocity, you differentiate d, 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 t. Yeah, cannot. Okay, let's call this s ds dt, when you differentiate a negative cosine, you get a sine graph. So that's how I know it's a sine. So that's kind of a shortcut if you can recognize the trigonometry graph shapes. But well, that's all for this oscillation bouncy question. Here's one where we need to do a bit more calculation. ON20, P12, Q6. Grab a calculator, try it out. You might want to try this one out. A stone is thrown vertically upwards from a point at time t0. The variation with time or velocity is shown. Mm -hmm. What's the displacement of the stone at time 3 seconds? So go and try this in your room. You take a, a something, you throw it up, 3 seconds later, where does it end up? To find displacement, you need to remember, wait a second, this is velocity graph. So displacement is going to be the area under the graph. But look at this area, there's two parts. The first part here is what we call the positive area. How do we find this area? Area, which is the displacement, will be area of triangle, right? So half times 2 times 20. That will give us 20 meters. But how about the other area? This little triangle here is also another area. And this will be half. The base is what? Uh, 3 minus 2 uh, from here to here. Okay, uh, just 1. 1 second. And the height, 10. Or negative 10. Usually, I don't include the negative. This will be 5 meters. But be careful. The first part is on the positive part of the graph. Means whatever displacement you have is positive. In other words, if I start off, the ball start off at this level, it will go up by 20 meters and kind of stop here. 20 meters away, positive. Then the other one of oh, five meters, this is in the negative part of the graph, also known as negative area, lah, which means you are displaced five meters, but in the negative direction. So in total, where do you end up? What is this thing? You're at point X, right? And they ask what is the displacement from point X. So at the end of the day, I'm saying, okay, what is this height? This displacement from point X. So 20 minus 5 is going to be level of 15 meters away from point X. So I'm going to write here 20 plus minus 5 gives you 15 meters. And that is with reference to above point or level X. So above X. So this one is a note to remind ourselves to be careful of which part of the graph we're looking at because the area could be positive, could be negative. So those are some of the examples that may come out. I will highly encourage you to try more past questions because it's not good to memorize. It's good to practice analyzing different shapes, curves of graph. And part of your revision, if you want to summarize things, you could draw a table like this one where you have object at rest, object at constant velocity, constant acceleration, and you draw the displacement, velocity, acceleration graph. You can use this to check your answer and see whether you got them correct based on the statement. For example, constant acceleration, this line, you see the acceleration? Constant value. That means gradient of Vt is constant. So you draw a straight line. Which means, wow, if this is a straight line, it's going to be a curve. Displacement increasing. And you start from 
non-zero gradient because your velocity at the beginning is non-zero. You could also go to more complicated ones like constant deceleration, increasing acceleration, decreasing acceleration. I'm not going to go through all of them. I highly recommend you to look through them, pause and really digest until it makes sense. Ask questions, ask a teacher, practice drawing, stare at graphs until it makes sense to you. Okay, so that's this main whole first part about graphs. How do you interpret and translate between the different graphs, displacement, velocity and acceleration? Because knowing how they relate will help to carry you to the next section where we're going to look at the equations now. We've looked at graphs. Are they equations? Definitely are. Stay tuned after another example or so. I'll see you in the next unit where we'll talk about how do we use what we call the Stuva kinematics equations to calculate motion. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.